<laughs> hey, everybody, and welcome back to For the Booze. For the Booze. Yay! We're back for real this time. We are. I'm sorry, everybody. I know I still sound a little sick, but I am feeling much better. Yay. But I know. It's been a long time. It's been like two and a half it's, weeks. It's craziness. Yeah. Well, you know, COVID is a, <laughs> a thing. It is. I'm How sure. I did not get so, it, I don't know. I don't know. Only me and uh, one of the other kids did. Yeah. And then the rest of you have been all right. I know. Regardless, again, I apologize for how I sound. It is what it is. But I, we wanted to get you an episode because the only other option would be to not put one out. And we're not doing that anymore. So. Yay. Here we are. Uh, we are doing something uh, very... Something I have honestly I'd never heard of, and it seems like it could be a very cool location. I have never heard of it, and I am pretty freaking excited. That's right. This week we are no, uh, we have listener stories. I want to start spreading them out until we get some more. Yeah. Um. So we're not going to read one this week, but we do have other ones that we will be reading in the future. But this week we are going to kind of stay on our side of the country, and we are going to be up in the Pacific Northwest. Yay. Uh, beautiful uh, area that I want to visit more than anything. Yes, me uh, too. We are going to travel to Portland, Oregon. Yay. I don't know why I had to say Oregon. I'm short. Well, I guess some people might think Portland, Maine. but uh, aren't, aren't the Redwood Forests there? Yes. Yes. That's we def- we wanna, definitely really, I, really, really want to go it see is that. a dream of mine. My soul. I feel like my soul needs that. Mm. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're traveling to Portland. Uh, in Oregon to a location I never heard of. And it is a, I, I guess, a very well-known um, building in the area. And Heck it is yeah. called the Piddick Mansion. That's right. The Piddick Mansion. Now, again, I've I've never heard of this. But when I was writing about it, it's, it's going to be one of the more wholesome hauntings that we've done oh if you will okay. i mean it's still a haunting so I'm, but <laughs> <laughs> we've done some in the past uh i forget what the name of the place but it was in florida you remember uh they haunted the home because they loved it oh yeah what was the name of that one? Oh, it's been it that was a while ago i'm not really sure it was a while ago yeah but this is gonna kind of be along the same kind of line here so, awesome what do you say we go ahead and get into this one i say Let's do it. Let's go. Portland is a port city in the Pacific Northwest and the most populous city in the U.S. state of Oregon. Situated in the northwestern area of the state of the confluence of the Willamette and Columbia Rivers, Portland is the county seat of Multnomah County, the most populous county in Oregon. As of 2020, Portland had a population of 652,503, making it the 26th most populous city in the United States, the 6th most populous on the West Coast, and the 2nd most populous in the Pacific Northwest after Seattle. Approximately 2.5 million people live in the Portland-Vancouver-Hillsboro or Washington Metropolitan Statistical Area making it the 25th most populous in the United States. About half of Oregon's population resides within the Portland metropolitan area. Named after Portland, Maine, which is itself named after the English Isle of Portland, the Oregon settlement began to be populated in the 1840s. Near the end of the Oregon Trail, its water access provided convenient transportation of goods, and the timber industry was a major force in the city's early economy. At the turn of the 20th century, the city had a reputation as one of the most dangerous port cities in the world, a hub for organized crime and racketeering. After the city's economy experienced an industrial boom during World War II, its hard-edged reputation began to dissipate. Beginning in the 1960s, Portland became noted for its growing liberal and progressive political values, earning it a reputation of a bastion of counterculture. The city operates with a commission-based government, guided by a mayor and four commissioners, as well as Metro, the only directly elected metropolitan planning organization in the United States. Its climate is marked by warm, dry summers and cool, rainy winters. 
The climate is ideal for growing roses, and Portland has been called the City of Roses for over a century. During the prehistoric period, the land that would become Portland was flooded after the collapse of glacial dams from Lake Missoula, in what would later become Montana. Now, these massive floods occurred during the last ice age and filled the Willamette Valley with 300 to 400 feet of water. Before American settlers began arriving in the 1800s, the land was inhabited for many centuries by two bands of indigenous Chinook people, the Multnomah and the Clackamas. The Chinook people occupying the land were first documented in 1805 by Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. Before its European settlement, the Portland Basin of the Lower Columbia River and Willamette River valleys had been one of the most densely populated regions on the Pacific Coast. Now, Henry Louis Pittock, longtime publisher of the Portland Oregonian, was born on March 1, 1836 in London, England, and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. As a boy, he learned printing in the family's printing firm and studied at the Western University of Pennsylvania's preparatory school. On arriving in Oregon in 1853, Pittock, a penniless, big-shouldered 17-year-old, was hired by Thomas J. Dreyer of Portland's Weekly Oregonian. He worked as a printer, mailed papers, delivered them to Oregon City Transport Hub, and soon rose to be a shop foreman. In lieu of wages, Pittick, as a business manager, was made one of Dreyer's partners from 1854 to 1856. In April 1860, Dreyer mortgaged the paper to Pittick, and he transferred it to him for debts on November 24th and left town. Pittick would also marry Georgiana M. Burton in 1860, and they would go on to have five children. And when Pittick was 24, with scant funds, he launched the six-day-a-week morning Oregonian on February 4th, 1861. He wanted the paper to be different from the weekly, to emphasize news over opinion, deliver news in a more timely fashion, and be less political. He pledged it to be, quote, unflinchingly Republican, to favor the Union, and never, quote, wantonly injure opponents' feelings. Pittick vigorously sought prepaid subscriptions, advertising, and commercial printing work. Weekday circulation climbed from about 300 in 1861 to 1,000 in 1864 to 11,000 in 1880 and 15,600 in 1890. In mounting numbers, Portlanders bulked largest in circulation, but the Oregonian also found subscribers among people within a three-hour ride from Portland by train in 1881 and within a 12-hour journey in 1909. By the 1890s, Pittock was published in Oregon's biggest, most widely read and quoted, and most influential daily. Rural circulation made the weekly version of the paper the state's largest until it ceased in 1922. Throughout his career, Pittock's ambitions extend beyond Portland and the Oregonian. At the age of 21, he invested in real estate and later opened Oregon's second paper mill, partly to serve the Oregonian's presses. Now, over time, he acquired entire city blocks and owned land throughout the Northwest. He invested in paper and lumber mills, a sheep ranch, railroads, and Portland Bank. These ventures made him rich in the last third of his life and enabled him to build the handsome Pittock Mansion. Pittock Mansion is a 16,000-square-foot French Renaissance-style home. It was designed by architect Edward T. Foulkes, who trained at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and French Echo des Beaux-Arts. Foulkes had a challenging client in Henry Pittock. Henry wanted an architecturally impressive house with the latest technology. The 46-room mansion was built on a hill overlooking Portland. The inside was uniquely designed with oak-paneled cabinets, marble floors, a huge central staircase, modern amenities, and a beautiful view of Mount Hood in the Cascade Mountain Range. 
Foil lines the inside of the entryway ceiling, a nod to Georgiana's frugal early years when she had to save foil from old tea containers in order to decorate the house. The curved wooden floors in the mansion's round and oval rooms are one of its many artistic features. Folk's experience designing commercial buildings helped him fulfill the tasks of including modern conveniences, such as thermostat-controlled central heating, indirect electric lighting, refrigerator room, elevator, and a central vacuum system. Now, Henry Pittock hired Portland firms and used local and regional materials when possible. For example, when the mansion's exterior is clad in sandstone from nearby Tonino, Washington. His use of Portland firms and regional materials earned him a letter of commendation from the Manufacturers Association of Oregon. The mansion's permanent exhibit profiles some of the local craftsmen who worked on the mansion as well as their tools of trade. Pittock Mansion was completed in 1914 when Georgiana was 68 years old and Henry was 80. Sadly, the couple did not have many years left together to enjoy the home they had built. Georgiana passed away in 1918, just four years after construction was completed, and then Henry died the following year. The members of the Pittock family remained in the home for many years, until their grandson, Peter Gantenbien, who had grown up in the house, attempted to sell it in 1958. However, he was unable to do so, and the house consequently sat empty for several years. The most destructive windstorm in the Northwest recorded history was the Columbus Day Storm, sometimes called the Big Blow. It's one of those once-in-a-lifetime events that people still talk about, even if they didn't experience it firsthand. On Friday, October 12, 1962, Columbus Day, a massive storm hit the coast of Northern California with the force of a Category 3 hurricane. The Oregon Encyclopedia entry on the event says, quote, It may have been the most powerful extratropical cyclone ever to hit the western United States. Originally named Typhoon Frida, the storm raged up the Pacific Northwest, toppling tens of thousands of power lines, flattening whole swaths of forests, and causing destruction all the way into Canada. Quote, Oregon experienced the full brunt of the typhoon and suffered more damage than any other state. Said Oregon Encyclopedia writer Jeff Leland, Rogue River, Siskiyou National Forest Historian. At Cape Blanco in southern Oregon, wind gusts were estimated at over 170 miles per hour. In Portland, winds on the Morrison Bridge hit 116 miles per hour. Falling trees blocked roads and damaged thousands of homes, while downed power lines created a dangerous mess for utility workers. Portland General Electric reported that 98% of its users lost power. The utility took two weeks to restore power to all of its customers, despite calling in crews from as far away as Montana. Now, the storm left at least 50 people dead and caused an estimated $200 million in damages in the U.S., more than $3 billion in today's money. According to Oregon State University reports, the storm damaged as many trees as the combined annual tree harvest of both Oregon and Washington. Now, it was severely damaged as a result of the massive Columbus Day storm of 1962, and Gantenbien contemplated having the mansion destroyed. But the community rallied around the famous site, and Portland residents donated $75,000 to help the city purchase and restore the old home. The city of Portland officially bought the Pittock Mansion in 1964, and a nonprofit was formed to take responsibility for the upkeep of the house. They spent just over a year repairing and restoring the mansion, and in 1965, it reopened as the Pittock Mansion Museum. 
It is open daily to the public for touring, and it is on these tours that many have claimed to encounter inexplicable experiences, perhaps with the late Pittocks themselves. Five decades after first opening its doors to the community, the Pittock Mansion is a magnificent reminder of how Portland grew into the city that it is today. Classic Houses of Portland calls it, quote, the most beloved of all the great houses of Portland. It typifies the success of the 19th century American entrepreneurial spirit. It also signifies the adventurous spirit of Henry Pittock and the Great Pacific Northwest, acting as a stop on Forest Park's famous Wildwood Trail. Replete with rich history, breathtaking interior features, and the best views of the city from 1,000 feet above sea level, Henry Pittock's legacy will always be remembered within the walls of his, quote, House on the Hill. And that's the story, that's the history of the Pittock Mansion, which I would like to point out. We didn't hear any, like, people murdering each other. There was no, you know, weird family murderous things. Right. Nothing. It was just a man. The only thing I really found about Henry Pittock was uh, there was some kind of, like, political thing that he kind of did somebody dirty on. But still, Mm. that's, there's no... There's none of the stuff that we usually find. Nobody was sick. Nobody, you know, had right. tuberculosis and died. Nobody huh. murdered somebody. Boy, you know, the stuff we always come across, this place just doesn't have it. Yeah. You know what it sounds like it does have? Beauty. Beauty. This place sounds amazing and gigantic. I didn't know you were there. What? You said it was beautiful. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I just love you. Thanks, babe. <laughs> I love you too. But yeah, I mean, I expected to full on like I thought, did I miss something? But right. no, it's just this was just a it's just a well liked uh piece of history within the community. Unfortunately, you know, they had it built and moved in when they were really old. Yeah. And then they died shortly after. So to me it's like it really makes sense if you know, if it's haunted, like I get it. Right. They waited their yeah. whole lives to do this. And uh, then they did it, and they barely got to spend any time there. I mean, I guess they did get to finally relish in, because, you know, back then, things didn't really get built as fast as they tend to nowadays. No, I'm, I mean, I'm sure this took a couple so, of years like, to build. Yeah, so at least they got four, what was it, four years, it was right? four years. Yeah. She got four, he got five. So at least they got to enjoy that last little bit of time and together. They're kids. I, I mean, well, they, they were always together, you know, so, like, I, I get that, but... It's still like a, this was your dream home. Right. You finally did it after working your whole lives. And and then, unfortunately, you barely get to enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. That kind of sucks, man. Yeah, it does. So, I mean, to think that they could be haunting the place, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. You know, they didn't get their time there. So, they're getting their time there now. And I have to say... I don't think Oregon was ready for that, like, Cat 3. They said it was a 3, They right? said it was a Cat 3. But 170 mile an hour, that's like that's category like five. Four that's going like into five? five? Yeah, yeah. All right. Five, I think, is 175. But yeah. still, that's definitely higher than three. That's that that's a that's a big story. And and like, all right, so we come originally from Florida. Yep. And where we live, like, they build for that. Oh yeah. You know, even mobile homes and stuff, like they're prepared for the most part, and they have been for decades. And and might I add, in Florida, no one really leaves. Unless it's like pushing towards a cat three. And then we're yeah. like, mm, let's party. Maybe. It's just a an excuse to board up your house and, and hang and out party. for days. Yeah. You know, that's what it's fun. That's what the real Floridians do. They board up, they buy <laughs> beer, and they hunger down. Now the prepping and stuff for it sucks and yeah. the cleanup afterwards sucks. Yeah, you but... listeners of the show might remember we've gone through a couple on uh, while doing the show. Yep, we sure have. We don't have to do that anymore. Now we gotta worry about snowstorms. And honestly, Utah, you let me down this year. Yeah, it's been pretty weak. I wanted snow. You know what? This isn't the Utah podcast. <laughs> but uh I get I get why, you know, people could think this place is haunted and I and if it is, I understand it because if we waited our whole lives to build a, a man and then we finally moved in Mm -hmm. and barely got the only good thing that came from this is i guess you know their kids got to stay there right so somebody said for years after so but how awesome like nothing bad happened Mm -hmm. that i i 
I didn't want to. I just expected to find something terrible. Sinister. Yeah. 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 But no. No, nothing sinister whatsoever. Just a lovely family and a lovely home. And and then the community took it over and now it's a museum. That's and it's cool. it's super nice, by the way. It is I very really, nice. It sounds amazing. What a nice touch too. They added foils to certain areas of decorating for as a nod to her frugal days of when they had to kind of I pinch love pins. that. It's really cool. Love it. But that is the history. And, you know, there wasn't a lot of history, honestly, because nothing really went down there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I it guess. It was good, though. Good yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Good well, job. Thanks. Yeah. But uh, after this ad break, we're going to come back and listen to some of the some of the spooky things that happened there. All right. I'm excited. Woo! And now, Blue's crew, back to the show. <laughs> Nestled in Portland, Oregon's West Hills neighborhood is Piddick Mansion, a Victorian chateau style abode with a haunted history. Built in 1914, Piddick Mansion was nearly lost forever when plans came down to have it demolished to create a subdivision in the 1960s before Portland residents came together to save it. Built by Oregonian publisher Henry Pittick, the home once symbolized the heights of Portland's wealthy elite. But after just four years in its gilded walls, both of the homeowners died. Now, It is said both their spirits still hang around the mansion, as many strange occurrences have been reported in the following years. Near the beautiful McClayey Park and the Cumberland Trailhead sits the infamous Piddick Mansion. Framed on all sides by lush greenery and spectacular gardens, the Piddick Mansion is a tourist hotspot. But don't let your guard down just yet. Many visitors report seeing strange things inside of the mansion. It is easy to see why people are drawn to the mansion year-round. Georgiana Piddick enjoyed being a socialite in the local aristocratical circles. She delighted in taking leisurely strolls with her friends around the mini gardens on the grounds. Georgiana especially enjoyed tending to her mini rose gardens. In fact, she helped create Portland's Rose Society, which held the first ever rose show in 1889. Eventually, her love of roses led to the launch of Portland's famous Rose Festival which is still celebrated to this day. Today, visitors can walk the rows of heritage roses, which gardeners hand-planted to honor Georgiana's contributions to Portland. Georgiana sadly died at the age of 72 in 1918, and one year later, her husband Henry followed his wife. The Piddick Mansion remained in the family until 1958, when Eric Ladd and Peter Ganton Bean decided to sell it. Both men, Piddick's grandsons, struggled to keep up with the maintenance required to keep the mansion functional. Then, in 1962, the Columbus Day storm hit, causing millions of dollars worth of damage to the building. The two grandsons decided to demolish the building, but the city of Portland stepped in. The community came together and raised $75,000 in three months to save the mansion. Soon after, the city of Portland purchased the mansion for $225,000 in 1964 after seeing how important it was to the community the city made the Piddick Mansion a historic site. In 1965, the Piddick Mansion opened its doors to the public 
and became an instant favorite among Portlanders. Unfortunately, after the Pittocks died, the mansion sat unused and in disrepair for quite some time. An estimated $8 million was needed to completely restore the mansion to its former glory. The Portland community banded together in 2006, and within 15 months, the mansion was completely restored. The mansion is not only a popular destination for Portlanders, but also a popular location for Hollywood movies. In 1977, the Piddick Mansion appeared in the film First Love, starring critically acclaimed romance stars William Catt and Susan Day. The mansion played a critical part in the story as the character's home. In 1982, the mansion moved away from romance and on to the slasher genre, with the film unhinged. Shot primarily at night, the mansion's interiors and exteriors were a large part of the movie. It became one of the most infamous movies filmed at the Piddick Mansion because of its explicit content. Regardless of the content of the movies, Portlanders were happy to help and receive their own spot at the end of the credits from the film's production team. In 1989, the mansion became haunted in The Haunting of Sarah Hardy. Morgan Fairchild and Sella Ward starred in this spooky movie, which received critical acclaim. Madonna and Willem Dafoe starred in the 1993 film Body of Evidence, which was shot primarily at the Piddick Mansion. Later, in 2008, the mansion was the finish line for the Emmy Award-winning reality game show, The Amazing Race. Since the 1960s, visitors have been reporting strange activity in and around the Piddick Mansion. Grounds workers and visitors alike all agree that the ghosts are not malevolent in any way. Many assume that the ghosts are the spirits of Henry and Georgiana Piddick. The highest reported activity happens in the upper rooms of the mansion. Visitors report that upon entering the rooms, they allegedly almost immediately smell the intense scent of rose perfume. (laughs) Staff believe that this is Georgiana Piddick, making her presence known. While most visitors report feeling surprised by the smell, most say that they felt the presence wished them no ill will. Outside, Near the northern side of the mansion, visitors report hearing a phantom shovel hitting the ground. Soon after, the sound of heavy footsteps stomping away towards the mansion can be heard. Staff believe that these are the sounds of the groundskeeper going about his daily routine. Like the Piddocks, the groundskeeper lived and died in the mansion. Footsteps of unknown origins have also been reported. They seem to happen at random, according to staff members, and at all hours of the day. Staff report seeing windows in the mansion open and close by themselves, almost as if they have a will of their own. Visitors and staff have even reported seeing a portrait of Henry Piddick moving around on the wall by itself. Some of the strangest reports involve human-like shapes, moving furniture, pictures, and even houseplants from room to room. One visitor reported hearing a picture fall off the wall in one of the rooms. 
when she went to investigate the sound. She watched as a woman wearing a long gown picked up the fallen picture from the floor. A staff member came up behind the woman and asked her if she was okay. The woman turned back around to see the woman in the gown had vanished. One female employee got the scare of her life as she closed up the building for the night. Part of her job involved turning off all the lights in the mansion. After all the lights were off, she began locking all of the doors, including the front door of the mansion. As she turned to leave for the night, all the lights in the mansion switched on. No matter what you believe, many people are convinced that someone or something haunts the grounds of the Piddick Mansion. Whether it be the spirits of Henry and Georgiana Piddick, or that of the groundskeeper. Visitors are sure there is something supernatural taking place there. Staff and visitors agree, however, the spirits are friendly and happily welcome newcomers. But what do everyday visitors have to say about the mansion? We took to the internet, and this is what we found. Takao M. on Yelp visited the home in 2023 and said, If you take the bus to get here, get ready for some serious walking uphill. Not sure I'd call this mansion, but sure it's a big house with some historic importance for the city. Would I come back again? No. I think once is more than enough. Also, there was one room that gave me bad vibes for whatever reason, so I had to leave that room immediately. Anywhere else was fine. Is there a ghost here? What I enjoyed most was the view of the city. The view was beautiful, and it's a nice spot for selfie lovers, lol. An anonymous commenter on the OregonHauntedHouses.com writes about their experience on June 17, 2018. Quote, During a behind-the-scenes tour at the Piddick Mansion, I had an unseen entity, a child, I guess, based on the height, shove right past my shoulder and the wall. I felt it through three layers of clothing, including a leather jacket. This was in the children's bedroom area of the mansion, where the hallway is a little bit narrower. This represents the first time that I have had an actual encounter with the paranormal. And one more from March 28, 2018 on the website OregonHauntedHouses.com goes on to write, quote, It's real. During my behind-the-scene tour, I was able to capture a few unexplained voices and mirror images. Very emotional during the servant's back stairs and gatehouse. The doll was also a very strange sight. Captured some amazing footage. Definitely lots of energy inside and out. All photos and footage were filmed with a cell phone only. Nothing professional. While most reports of hauntings at the Piddick Mansion are believed to be Henry and Georgiana Piddick, or occasionally the spirit of their beloved groundskeeper, No report indicates any malevolence. Many describe the spirits as happy to show tourists around and enjoying the company the public provides. Much like the roses in Georgiana's garden, the spiritual activity at Piddick Mansion has become a cornerstone of the experience. Some even call it the happiest haunted house in the country. And if you ask Henry and Georgiana, they might just say, that's right. And that's the haunted stuff at the Piddick Mansion. I, 
I kind of like it. It's very refreshing. It's very... Um, <laughs> compared to what we normally get. It's very I wholesome. Like it. It's like wholesome yes. compared to everything else. It is. We, week in and week out, we read all kinds of stuff about people jumping off of buildings and poisoning each other, or murdering each other. Throwing babies off. Oh. And like <laughs> You will never get over That was like way back in the yeah. beginning of the show. It was awful. <laughs> Wasn't that Cecil Hotel? Yes. Oh my God. I can't. I can't. I don't mean to what? laugh, but... I mean to laugh. <laughs> I but just, there's, what we're saying, you guys get it. Is don't you throw, listen don't to our throw stories. babies out the window. That's what we're saying. That, don't throw babies out the window. For sure that. And like, we just, we get so much morbid, negative, crappy negative. stuff that yeah. happens and leads to these quote unquote hauntings, I'll say, alleged hauntings mm. at most of these places, you know, and like. This is nice. This yeah. is very nice. We get very few that are just like, they love their home, so they're here. Right. And it is nice when we when we get them. I don't know how the listener feels. I mean, we don't make up the stories. These are the stories. You know, this is just how it is. But it is nice because I didn't have to read anything about people getting murdered or families being torn apart. Yeah. or And if you like, like to hear those, send in listener suggestions well, and we'll do them. Or just wait, because I'm sure we'll do one <laughs> next week. It'll be another one. But I actually did not think I was going to be able to, but I did find some EVPs. Oh my god! Which I am truly amazed. Um, Yay! This one's coming from Facebook. It is on a channel called <laughs> Zind4G. It is like <laughs> Z-I-N-D-4-G-I. Uh, this was 16 years ago. Holy crap. Hopefully we'll be able to hear it. And it says, during a special evening tour of Pittick Mansion in Portland, Oregon, my friend Mike captured this EVP in the butler's gallery. I'm just in the kitchen ahead of the gallery and no one is behind us. Mike asked the question, is there someone here that wishes to make their presence known? And you'll hear the answer at nine seconds. We never heard a thing until after Mike played back the videos. Wow. So this isn't very long. Video so. from 16 years ago? 16 years oh, ago. Oh, Lord. So here we go. Let's listen to what it says. Let's see if we can try to listen to what it says. Someone here who wishes to make the presence soon. Okay. I, what? I, I heard it, and I think I know what it says for once. I don't, I didn't hear anything. I just heard like a, huh. I did. If you listen really close. Okay. He asks, is anyone here, or what does he say? Make your presence known. And if you listen, I'll turn, I'll play it again, and I'll turn it up a little more. But listen for a voice that goes, yes. Ooh, it wasn't that like, huh? I don't think so. Okay. I, I think it's, I hear a voice that goes, yes. Okay. I didn't hear that. Let's, let's see if we can hear it. Someone here wishes to make the presence known. I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. <laughs> See, I, I knew At that's first what I, I thought it was one other thing, and then it was definitely the one yeah, right after. I, I there just, was like a little. Phew. Yeah. And exactly. then like a it's very bre- it's it is it's very breathy. It is. I heard it. <gasps> <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Way too excited for this. Well, usually, like, I can't, you know, like, make out what it says or, like, you can kind of hear something or, I don't know. So, I get very excited when I'm like, <laughs> yes, I heard it. I mean, I never hear them. So, it's pretty <laughs> you exciting You got it. Me. You I got do, that I one. caught it right away. Uh, this is really, I think, the only other one I can find. And let me, let me see what this says. I'm hoping that this is from Pittick Mansion, honestly. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, it's from First Call paranormal from six this is from six days ago i'm not sure if this is even the pittick mansion Uh oh there's like no information about it at all you know i don't want to play this and have it not be yeah that's uh, fair what we're talking about that's fair okay so never mind we we looked (laughs) i mean you probably won't really get to hear how much we looked, but we did look and there there was really only good one there are other ones that come up when i put in pittick mansion but I'm not sure if they're actually Pittick Mansion, and I don't want to play it if it's not. Yeah, I don't want to misrepresent yeah. anything. Right? Or, you know. No, so. I get that. 
It was still a good one. I liked that one. It was clear for me anyways. I definitely heard it. I, I definitely thought it was something else. Yeah. At first. Well, but I, I'm not a hundred percent. I'm not a hundred percent sure. It could have been the female voice. I don't know. Yeah, but it didn't really sound like it said anything. It just sounded like a <laughs> Um, yeah. I don't think she was singing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, that's going to take us to, I have to ask you a question, Megan. <gasps> and it goes a little something like. Is it real? So as the dude with the super deep, luscious, sexy voice on there asks, <laughs> do you think that the Piddick Mansion is haunted? Well, yeah, I could okay. definitely see it. I, I definitely want this one to be real um nothing was super like against it uh and i do want to believe that the you know the people who built and loved and truly wanted to spend their last years of their lives are still there okay so just simple yeah (laughs) (laughs) so what about you babe i want to believe it's real okay but i'm actually gonna lean uh, I'm just going to stay in the middle of this. I, I think it could be. I think there could be something going on here. It would make sense to me anyways. Yeah. If something, you know, uh, paranormal stuck around, it, it, it makes sense to me because these people love their home and they barely get to spend any time there. So it makes sense. But to me, I don't really have enough evidence to support uh, like me saying yes. Okay. Um, I mean, there's not even really fake evidence to look at. I, th- I think that's more where I was trying to go to. So but I was just like, yeah. I mean, I want it to be real because I really, right. I really do like the wholesome, the like the wholesomeness about it. I think it's really good. I, I, yeah. I like this where people are haunting a home because they just they loved it. They loved it. They didn't get to spend enough time yeah, there, they, and, and their kids grew up there. So, like, yeah. I get it. I want it to be real, and it could be. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying for me, I just don't have enough information yet to draw any kind of conclusion about. I it. I get it. Yep. So I guess this week we're going to have to skip the old uh, st- seal of approval. But but for once, that doesn't necessarily mean it gets any disapproval. Right. This one just doesn't have enough information for us yet. Got it. But if something comes up in the future, I mean, I'll keep my eye on the internet. And if I can find more stuff or maybe we'll revisit this later with a, you See know. See if we can find a paranormal group yeah, that's on there or something. Something like and, that. And yeah. then we'll come back to this and maybe we'll discuss it again. Maybe we'll do like a bonus episode or Or something. paranormal group friends out there. Yeah. If you go and want to come on the show and talk to us about it. Yeah. I'm down cool. with that. I'm definitely down for that. So yeah, if you've investigated the Piddick Mansion, I don't even know if they allow investigations there. Oh, that's a good point. But even if you visited and enough to to gather enough information write us or i don't know we'll figure it out just get in contact with us i like this one but i guess that's it for this week and uh where can they find us they can find us on instagram at for the booze underscore podcast and on facebook at for the booze you can also find us on x twitter at for the booze and you can find us on youtube at for the booze and one of these days we'll gonna we are getting a camera we are and we will be making videos yes Uh, the studio just got finished Yay. And uh, also uh, for the booth 12 at for the, I'm sorry, for the booze 12 at gmail.com. <laughs> Write us in any, uh, you know, suggestions for places you'd like to hear about, you'd like us to cover, or if you have a listener story you'd like us to read on the show. We want stories. Yeah, send it in. But even as much as we want stories, we would also like your reviews. I keep checking yes. every single day. And we've actually, I think we're up to 30 something on, on Spotify. Yay. So all you Spotifyers, I salute you. I give you. This, this, the, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) But we, you know, from what I understand, it really helps the most on Apple. So if you have Apple and you haven't done it yet, shoot us one on over there. But I guess this is where we're going to end this week. It is. So thank you, everybody, so much for listening. And we will see you in the next one. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye.